All right, so we have started. Okay. People are joining in now. Cool. Nice. So I'll wait for your queue to yeah. understand. Yeah, just yeah. let's let's allow a few minutes for everybody yes. yeah. to settle down and uh, perfect. Yeah. Then we can begin. Right, so we are live on uh, Facebook and the Facebook as well. Yep, perfect. Okay, so probably another minute or so and uh, yeah. then we'll begin. Sure.
All right. So I think a couple of seconds more. Uh, we have good number of people with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or so for people to join in and just settle. All right, so I think we are uh, good to begin with our today's session. So a very good afternoon uh, to everyone and uh, a very warm welcome to everyone as well at the same time. I am Gurjashan Singh, VP Alliances and Client Solutions at Great Place to Study. Uh, we had a very terrific last month filled with interesting topics and interesting people to deliver it. We did some crazy uh, webinars on a lot of topics that I think helped a lot of students to get valuable insights into different types of careers. And I'm sure that it made, the, made it possible for them to take, a, to take the right decision that, you know, what career do they want to get into? But nonetheless, uh, this uh, particular month also, we are trying to get even more interesting personalities and even more interesting topics uh, to, to give you more insights about, uh, you know, different uh, career domains uh, uh, and, you know, to, to make it clear to you that how you can, you know, uh, uh, pursue those career options and how you can be more precise about choosing your career options at the way, at the same time. So feel free to uh, actually, you know, go on to our uh, landing page for which I'm sharing the, uh, you know, link in the chat uh, for everybody to explore at their time. This particular link will host all the uh, information about the webinars which are going to uh, come in this particular month and the details of their speakers as well. At the same link, you can also find the recordings of our previous webinars. So if some of you have missed your favorite topic, so please feel free to go on to the recordings and you know check them out. I would start uh, by giving you a little background about Great Place to Study, uh, which is an organization, a relatively young organization that aims to bring a positive change in the education industry and offer practical solutions to students and educators through its products. I'd also like to share that we have recently launched our new product, which is called Career Development and Acceleration Platform. It is a student engagement platform that facilitates career discovery and college search. It brings all the content in a world-class cinematic way with verified information on various career fields. It also helps at the same time for students to discover their career on the basis of their inherent strengths and has a large video career library to inspire the students to make the best decisions about their career on the basis of the verified information provided in the platform. I'm sharing the link in the group as well of our main website. So feel free to check out our latest uh, product at your time of convenience. And now without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker for the day. His name is Mr. Zulfi Ali. He's an amazing speaker and I think an amazing personality and an expert on design thinking. He has 15 years of deep and wide expertise in academics, industry, branding, and graphics. As the creative and academic director of JD Institute of Fashion Technology, uh, uh, he has crafted a vision for design education that will cater to contemporary demands of the industry and design aspirants. Having served as a creative, creative director for men's wear apparel brand, Urban Touch, he delivers the insight of the industry centric viewpoint into mainstream academics an ambassador for sustainability, human-centric design, and design thinking, he has conducted numerous seminars and workshops to propagate the role of design in our modern society and its relevance for the sustainable future. Today, he's going to enlighten us with his knowledge on design thinking, which he thinks that is a solution for future, uh, because I, I think we all know the notion that goes around that design is the king. And uh, we will see that today well. And also he will put some light on, uh, you know, the contemporary issues that humankind stares at beginning of this decade and how design thinking can become the fundamental fix, of, fix for all challenges. Uh, he'll also uh, give a quick look into the process of design thinking and application that makes a difference. Uh, so I think this is going to be a very interactive session today and uh, I hope everybody will enjoy it. So now I would like to request Mr. Zulfi Ali to actually take over from here and uh, start with his presentation, as well as I also would like to introduce my colleague who is here with us. His name is Vishnu Nair, 
uh, he will be taking uh, care of the Q and A later during the session, and will help us with the closing of the session as well. So, Mr. Zulfi Ali, I will request you to kindly take over from here, and uh, let's begin with the presentation then. Okay, good session. I am audible to you. I hope that I'm audible. Yes, yes yeah. you're fairly audible. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a it's a great opportunity that um, I have received uh, on this platform. I think I would like to thank a uh, great place to study, uh, Gurjashin and my employer, JD Institute of Fashion Technology, for this wonderful opportunity. I think um, these times that we are going through, uh, I think it's the first time that I'm sitting and taking a uh, a speech. I have never sat and taken a, a talk because it's it was always like you have to stand and take a talk. So this itself shows that how different times that we are in and different times require different thought process. I think this webinar by itself shows that we have to evolve our thought to arrive at solutions which will benefit all of us. So probably 45 days back, if somebody would have uh, suggested this opportunity, maybe people would have raised their eyebrows, but today it's happening. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that we have here. And um, as what uh, Gurjashin just described, um, yes, um, I have been into this field of design for the past more than 15 years. And uh, I think my collective experience in multiple perspectives will help uh, people in this uh, uh, collaboration to understand a little bit more into if there are students present over here, uh, I think this is a buzzword that you have been hearing a lot, a lot of places, a lot of times, uh, whether it is design or design thinking, you have been hearing a lot. And also if there are non-students who are present here who are also from probably from design background, or art background, or, you know, or also from business backgrounds, maybe your parents are present here, maybe your colleagues are present here. So I think for everyone, this is equally applicable. It's just that um, it depends from what your perspective is. So what I would try to do over here in the short session since design thinking is a very broad topic uh, and it also sounds like something really big, but my duty over here is try to, you know, simplify it and try to present it. I hope that I'll be successful in trying to give you that understanding. Um, this uh, subject is not, but not any particular vertical centric. This is in generic what design thinking stands for. Um, to start off that, so probably what I would do is that I'll start off with my presentation. So please give me a moment while I'm sharing the screen. Yes, so I hope that uh, we are able to see the screen. So um, quite bright and quite interesting that this topic is. So um, I think this is one of the questions that we normally ask, um, what is design thinking really? I mean, there are a lot of versions. I think you can immediately do a Google search and you can go into you know the images part of Google and try to type design thinking. So you will see multiple kind of graphs, multiple kind of descriptions. Most of them talk on a very a similar platform. I think there is a lot of interpretations and it is still an evolving um, field of interest that as in how it moves on, it will it'll keep finding more interesting points to talk about. So the most important thing, why do we require design thinking at this point of time? Because uh, that's what we are trying to address through this um, small talk. So going ahead. So uh, technically saying design thinking, I can read it out for you. Design thinking is a search for a magical balance between business and art, structure and chaos, intuition and logic, concept and execution, playfulness and formality, and control and empowerment. I know it sounds quite, um, it's like a big thing. I mean, right now to to decode this is going to take a lot of time. So this is how it actually feels when you think of design thinking, because design thinking is not in particular to any vertical. It's not particular to fashion. It's not particular to interior or jewelry or product or you know film or animation. So it's it's universally applicable. So that also makes it more challenging to understand how are these things going to be applied into into the verticals that I am going to be interested in. But having said that, um, to give you a small understanding is that design thinking is 
is not something um, it's it's more like a it's it's more like a habit that you develop it's it's a habit that probably a designer can develop uh, a layman can develop a, a business leader can develop i think it can be developed by everybody and anybody it's just that there are certain things that we need to understand about design thinking so we are structured in our minds to take it forward so going ahead to understand why we require design thinking why all this words that we we have mentioned here like say business art concept execution so it's very important to um have a quick look into understanding why do we require design first of all i mean what is this design all all about so taking you quickly through you know um a whole timeline of you know why design so if you look into this um uh, into this page you can quickly see that there are these four revolutions that you know decisively played a role in in making the human species stand where we are today right now so if you look into say we are 2.5 million years back that is around 25 you know lakh years back you know that is when we did the first revolution which was called as a cognitive revolution so it is during this time is when from 25 lakh uh, years you know from that time we have started developing the ability to you know control our brain power control our understanding you know this is the same duration when we invented the fire when we started inventing the language we started doing a lot of basic tools um, we were also a hunter gatherer nomadic society during this time so this is the first time and first instances of design thinking um, that when when we had to be in an environment where you know you had to um, uh, play a role in trying to survive trying to figure out as a species how do you propagate so i think those are the first signs that yes we are problem solvers you know we are we can take up challenges we can look forward in understanding how do we survive so can you see that the timeline from 2.5 million years to 12000 years that's precisely almost you know 24 lakh 88000 years later we came down to the next revolution which was called as the agriculture revolution i think this was a next turning point in the human society so if you see that we took a really really long time to reach to this point where you know we moved into the next stage of the evolution of you know the, of the human species that you know we went into animal domestication which gave rise to settlements which gave rise to you know uh, farming um, it farming gave rise to food security all of this gave rise to larger settlements smaller towns cities kingdoms these gave rise to the the requirement to you know make uh, data you know uh, uh, you have to you have to always make data so which gave rise to script uh, we need to trade and transcript so that gave rise to money and also this gave rise to the this is the most precious time during from 12000 to you know um, down onwards we also came up for um, the, the birth of religions i mean we saw that a lot of religions whether it is monotheistic uh, or probably polytheistic so we have come across multiple kinds of religions coming up during these times um so then it took if you if you see that it took around 11500 years um for us to reach you know to a position where we have um kind of um it it we went in from you know um the um agricultural revolution um and we went into the um we went into the scientific revolution so if you see that in the last 500 years i think what happened is that there are a lot of questions that you know religion was unable to answer there are a lot of people in the world who spoke who asked questions more than what religion could answer so i think that gave rise to a lot of this curiosity um that gave rise to uh, a lot of um, okay so that gave rise to a lot of um, you know um, intuition a lot of uh, place where a lot of people felt that you know it's time for us to see what is beyond our um, you know beyond our realm so that's a time of exploration that's a time when people set sail discovered america discovered australia you know discovered the south america you know they they went around the world they discovered the asian um, subcontinent so this is a time of world exploration and also i think the world explorations uh, led to you know colonization colonization where you know um, europeans went to asia they went to america 
I think that also rave, gave rise to something called as capitalism. Um, down the lane capitalism gave rise to industrialization. And coincidentally, I think the same industrialization made it capable to discover oil. So oil was always there, but then there had to be an industry, you know, um, powerhouse or methodologies to ensure that we extract oil. So the moment oil was discovered, um, we understood that, you know, steam power was nothing. I think that gave rise to a lot of push to humanity to understand that we have ultimate unlimited sources of energy. I think this same energy is what pushed us towards you know, if you see from the last industrialization to the present day, it is the same. We are still dependent on this fossil fuels. I mean, and we are still depending on these energy sources for all of our, um, in, in our world. So I think that gave rise to specifically after, uh, so it was a very chaotic time from probably the post industrialization to, you know, the 1945 till the end of the first world, uh, second world war. So I think post Second World War, there was a whole revival all across the world from, um, so it was a time of, you know, renewed interest in a lot of things. So that gave rise to a, a second probably industrialization 2.0 or probably uh, so that there was a new world order created. There was a cold war that was going on. You know, there was uh, computing power being discovered. You know, there was tremendous amount of air travel, which which started the whole idea of, you know, globalization, electricity started reaching to the hook and corner, corners of the world, you know, and also right now, all of this in the past 70 years have, you know, took us to a point where we are standing right now, you know, that, that point is called as artificial intelligence. I think that is, we are in the cusp of a, a, a very new revolution, probably, you know, this technology revolution, probably if you do it another 50 or 60 or 100 years from now, I think we can probably add one more circle which says that the artificial intelligence revolution. So how much things will change right now itself, we are seeing bits and pieces of that happening in our daily life from Alexa's to assistant to, you know, um, robots that save, uh, I mean, they, they are used in multiple fields uh, to execute things. Um, there are programs that can play games. They can beat the best human uh, champions in that game. So I think, we are on the cusp of seeing that. So in between all of this, if you see in 25 lakh years of our existence, it is in the last probably few hundred years that we are really kickstarted this process of, of this race. I think it is very well propelled by availability of energy, uh, disposable energy and the rise of capitalism. I think rise of capitalism is based on the ideology of something called as consumerism. I think we are supposed to buy more and more and more things. I think we are supposed to get more with us. I think you need to have desire. You need to, you, your, your, your need is not what is only required. You need to move into wants. I think the same want and desires have given rise to numerous kind of things that we may require. So if you look around, even at the place where we are sitting now, wherever you are sitting, you can look at the number of products, number of things that are designed probably to serve you as a human from every single thing from your mobile to laptop, to your bed, to chair, to fan, you know, everything is trying to serve you as a human. So I think that gave rise to a lot of demand that gave rise to a specific field of interest called as, or field of, you know, professionals called as designers who, who cater to that particular field, trying to figure out. So there is uh, automobile designer now. So there is uh, graphics, so there is fashion, there is interior, every single particular field of interest now requires a particular kind of designer. Now, this having said that now later when this field became more vast, there were people who were interested asked, I mean, can we apply these design uh, principles onto, you know, other area of interest, whether I can apply into business or uh, all that. So that is how this whole terminology was coined in as design thinking, which was propagated from, uh, from the Western world. Uh, definitely now this is a buzzword all across that we are seeing. So uh, moving ahead now, when, since we understand that how design came into existence and what was the need of design. Uh, we, so this, this model that you see here is called as the, you know, so it's a small comparison between what was, what is now, um, or what is going to be right now. So if you, um, if you look into this carefully, if you see that in the 20th century or till up till the 20th century, I think the entire model focus of 
um, the business or product or everything was about first about profit. I think you should have the maximum profit out of this entire uh, product or services, followed by the people who serve uh, the, the product that serves or the services that serve. And lastly, the least importance was given to planet. I don't think anybody you know, thought about what will happen to our planet or what will happen to our environment or what will happen to our ecosystem. So uh, similarly, like recently, uh, once we have understood that you know, plastic was never designed to be a polluter. It was a problem solving for, you know, avoiding of using of paper because paper was being used a lot for bags and all that. And somebody wanted to invent plastic and say that, hey, I mean, you don't have to use paper anymore because this will save a lot of, you know, uh, paper and trees being cut. But look at what's happened today. I mean, if that plastic was designed better during that time, if the designer would have thought of planet first, people then, and then only profit, but I think those cheap chemical compositions that came out of the fossil fuels and hydrocarbons, you know, ensured that, you know, plastic is very much profit centric. So one solution that tried to address another problem became the problem of today as we are seeing it. So this is just one example. There are numerous kind of examples. I mean, the whole idea of inventing a car was mobility uh, almost 140 years back. Um, but then look at what, what is it doing? I mean, it's, it's actually everybody owns two cars, three cars. I mean, that's creating a lot of pollution. So I think everything that is designed will be redesigned, will be undergoing a, a whole change. But unfortunately, what is happening is that the only thing that we don't have right now with us, it's called as time. I mean, right now, the rest of the things are moving around us, whether it is global warming or, you know, uh, destabilize economies all of this are like really pushing forward at a pace where we are finding it difficult to you know catch up to so this new ideology of the 21st century is going to be the mantra of design thinking henceforth so to understand how do we achieve this 21st century mantra of you know planet people and profit we need to have a quick look into you know um, uh, why and how or probably how can we probably try to understand this what is design thinking is so uh, if you look at this quote, so it literally says that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write. Really? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you in between, uh, but I think the slide is not changing. Can you just check your uh, uh, screen share option once? Um, mine is moving. Which slide am I? Can I know that? Uh, to me, it appears you are still on the first. Oh, I'm so sorry. But here it is changing. You probably have to stop and reach. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now I can see. Now we can see. Oh, I'm so sorry. That means that everyone would have seen it without the slide. Yes, still. Oh, I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I did not. Okay. So the 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 slide was stuck here. Yes, the slide was stuck here. Oh, oops. So nobody had ever seen the other slides. <laughs> no <problem. laughs> you can run them through, through ah, the okay. slides once, once like. Okay, so I know. think. Uh, they would have probably heard it, I suppose. Yes, yes, they heard okay. it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just quickly take them through again. Shall I keep it like this? I don't know when I'm taking it to full screen, maybe that there is an issue or... Something. Probably you can keep it like I'll, this. I'll keep it like this. This is more yeah. than enough, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Right, so um, so sorry guys, I mean, uh, whoever is present here, uh, unfortunately because of the technical error that I'll just quickly run through this again. So uh, from the first slide, when I asked you what is design thinking really, um, to, you know, um, this is a slide that kind of explains that I told you design thinking explains a lot of things, but unfortunately this sounds right, like a big thing right now. That's the reason why I said that we need to understand why design exists. So this is a slide that, you know, um, I was describing about the four definitive revolutions, uh, that has happened to the human species. Um, so if you look into this, this is the cognitive revolution, the agricultural revolution, the scientific and the technology revolution. So if you look at these time spans, since you have heard this, I hope that you'll be able to, you know, relate uh, with this slide. Um, so um, if, you, if, you, if you remember this, what I've said is the requirement of design was a product, a natural product of human evolution. Even when design existed, problem solving existed from the time of the human species when we started. But design as such, at this kind of a scale, um, you know, diversified in different platforms, different verticals, probably has happened only in the last 100, 200 or 300 years. 
So I think that is where we came at saying that design is a recent requirement. I mean, the so-called format of design that we are seeing is is a is a recent um, uh, evolution of uh, of the human species. So um, since we need to understand how design is impacting the environment, design is impacting our lives. That is the reason why I would wanted to take you to this slide, which uh, told you the two type of models of working for design, which in the 20th century, which spoke about, you know, profit people and uh, planet, where people, uh, everybody was focused only on the profit, you know, nobody was, that's where I took the example of um, the, uh, the plastic um, or, the, or the automobile, which I took the example. So we cannot afford to keep going on this, this format of design because it has, it has shown that um, in the last 20 plus years, we have seen what kind of consequences that we are having to all of this. Um, today, look at us. Today, we are under a lockdown. Um, uh, we really wish that the kind of budget that our governments had for our defense, you know, um, we, we literally was fighting an army which we thought is there neighboring in our neighboring countries. But now, if you look at it, instead of investing heavily into our healthcare or into our health infrastructure, we have invested heavily into weaponizing. You know, we have these many number of nuclear weapons. I'm unable to see none of these nuclear weapons are able to um, kill a small little virus, which has put us all down into a room. So I think the prioritization right now of thought process of the community, of the society by itself needs to change. I think if we do not change it, you know, we, we will be changed forever. I mean, the, the life as we know it, I mean, in the last 40, 45 days, you all would have been observing, I mean, how, how different, or maybe all of us are quite, um, you know, we all are quite uh, privileged to have this kind of a situation where you, are, you and me are able to take up a, a Zoom call and discuss about all this. But I'm trust, trust me, I mean, 90% of, of this population probably are not that privileged to come on Zoom and discuss all this. Probably they are facing it on a real time, um, real life there. I mean, uh, the daily wage laborers, I mean, they can't do all of that, I mean, but they are the ones who are taking the brunt. So I think it's high time, it's high time that we need to think differently about the situation. And I really believe that design thinking can and will be able to shed light into how we can solve the problems in a, in a, in a better and more sensible manner in our, in our future. So um, like what I said, to understand how this can be done, it's also important uh, because I believe that there are a lot of students over here right now in this, um, in this uh, meeting. So for them and for everybody, this design thinking is a very heavy word. Uh, it has multiple thought processes. So it, we will do one thing, we'll quickly look into, um, you know, what design thinking can give you, how does it work? And what are the quick things that you need to look into because otherwise design thinking is a very, very deep topic to go into. So if you look into this quote, which I was telling, it says that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, whereas, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. So it's a well said quote, which is very relevant to, you know, today's times for this upcoming decade. And so, because it's not about, you know, this is metaphorically said that, you know, Design thinking is also about learn, unlearn, and relearn. We have to be open enough to, you know, um, uh, absorbent enough to understand what is happening around. So to move forward, you know, the problem is that we have lost touch with what is around us. Uh, we are completely getting disassociated with a lot of, we are, we are living in this bubble, which we think will last forever. I think it's also important that every business leader, every uh, every leader of the country, I think community leaders and, and by individually us, we need to take that understanding as to how we need to behave, how we need to think ahead in our future and how we can inculcate this thought process in, in whatever career I take, whatever job I do. How do I, how do I inculcate this as a habit and a thought process? To, so to understand that, let's see how design thinking can become a habit, can become, um, you know, or what design thinking is capable of giving you. So to understand that, we will quickly go into this, um, uh, this division that clearly tells you. So you can see, as you can see that there is a business thinking, then there is a creative thinking, and in the center, you can see that there is a, a design thinking. So if you look into all the things that describes the, the business thinking and the creative thinking, um, I would not want to go through every single word by word. Instead of that, I'll sum it up. Um, you can, meanwhile, you can go through this. So um, 
when you when you look at artist probably you know if you if you look at an artist and ask i mean are you painting for someone so the answer is that no i'm not painting for someone i'm painting for myself are you sculpting sculpting it for someone until and unless it is a commercial project so the sculptor or the artist would always want to you know self express or to you know want to put some kind of a thought into it or it may be a stroke that he understand what it is or he want the world to see it in that view so that's how normally you know artist and really creative thinkers work so which is a really good thing i mean they are able to talk about this world in a very different format so um up until till photography came into being the if you see most of the paintings of the previous time it was mostly landscape it was mostly realistic you know everything most of the artists used to paint everything which is realistic you wanted to ensure that my painting looks like exactly like that place but then came you know then came photography the photography completely changed the view by which art is seen photography exactly took the thing and put it over there so you can exactly see how it look like so artist never wanted to any more paint exactly what it look like so probably that is when art changed into a direction of interpretations you know uh, or perspective towards art so if you see that post photography world uh, the art world has completely changed into so today we know that art world as what modern art uh, installation art you know uh, abstract art so there are different kind of art which never existed before but today it exists because of a certain sudden change that was brought in by photography so if you look into all of them as artists their main reason of doing something is to express they are very intuitive and emotional about it you know for them there is no problem in front of them that they are solving they are solving their own problems of their mind which they want to express so that is what how creative thinkers work really if they are purely creative thinkers at the same side when business thinkers work they are bothered about the business they are they bothered about numbers they are bothered about you know what what comes in and what goes out and you know at the end of the day what the balance sheet looks like and you know they have very strict outlook on to certain things in a very you know very narrow minded mindset on certain things so up until now world existed like that but now a lot of organization a lot of uh, you know companies if you see a lot of the successful companies right now today what are running even older companies which are running right now were forced to adapt to you know different uh, methods you know if you if you look into it ibm was a leader in computer uh, at a certain time but today they are not you know so it may be it shows that if you keep thinking in a very narrow minded mindset somebody else will snatch it over from you so this is where the importance of design thinking comes if you look into that center line it clearly shows you what design thinking is capable of it it uses both sides of the brain you know it it keeps you switching it between both sides of the brain being rational and you know uh, intuitive it also uh, you know helps you in analyze and you know creative uh, enough to understand what decision should i be take and it also works on certain problems it identify a problem it, it it identifies a gap where you know you need to intervene as a designer or as a solution provider so this this characteristics of design thinking is what makes the it 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 makes it such a lethal powerful weapon for the modern times for anybody because it doesn't rely only on one side of the brain it doesn't say that okay i am a right sided brain person or you know i am a left sided brain person so no it's not like that it's about you require it equally you require to think logically you require to think creatively so i think this is where design thinking falls perfectly saying that yes this thought process this way of thinking will help me understand and analyze things in in a better perspective for me to arrive at better solutions so to move forward you know to sum it up if you look at this diagram it clearly tells that when innovation happens when innovation happens this is the right combination of viability desirability and feasibility when these three things combine together desirability is about what we want what we what we need you know when that same thing is combined with you know viability whether whether on a long term will i be able to run these things will i be able to provide these services will it will it provide enough you know profit for me to sustain my community or my business or will it be able to provide jobs for 10 people so viability is a big issue in there and also feasibility technically are resources available am i creating a lot of problem for my environment you know so these these three things when it comes to the right balance that is when we call that there is an innovation that that is when a true innovation that happens so this is in just what a design thinking looks from far 
uh, from 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 the larger perspective this is what design thinking does to thought process but to go more deeper now you will find a lot of kind of graphs that explained the model of design thinking how it works so we will spend a little bit time on this to understand how does it work so if you look into this graph it's it's a it's it's a concentric circular graph so if you look into it if you see there are certain stages that keep going out as in how it evolves so if you ask me which is the first one and which is the last one somebody can decide to come from out in or from somebody from in out so it is it is something that you would like to look at but also understand that it starts from the center point i mean the focus is on the center and if you see the focus point in this is something called as empathy i think empathy is the ability of a person to you know feel and see from another person's perspective to understand what others require to 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 look into their problems and you know to live like them and to understand how it feels like you know if you really have to understand a problem with probably let's give example that if you want to understand how kitchens in daravi are are supposed to be designed i would probably suggest you to go and stay in daravi for probably a month and do some cooking i think only then you will understand what are the issues that you face over there in a constrained space you know so that means that empathy means that you need to put yourself into that shoes first only then you can absorb that and understand what are the real problems that they face and what solutions could be provided so it says that that's the first thing define is when you're trying to identify you're identify something you're identifying the need you're identifying the want you're identifying what aspirations this target group has so once you identify something you can move into more of research you can you can move into understanding gathering more data there are a lot of data to be gathered you know um how will things work are there are there probably existing solutions for these you know there are a lot of data that you need to gather only without you know without gathering this data it becomes very difficult for us to you know sit in ideate something so ideation is a stage when we really look at you know finding probable solutions you know maybe i can design something like that maybe i can create something like this maybe this is the material that i need to source maybe this is how visually it is supposed to look so it goes from visualization data synthesis or you know forming patterns in your brain as to you know you are always imagining you know you always like the way you when you plan a trip and when you want to go abroad you run it through your mind right as if you are there as if you are doing that as if you are you know purchasing that you have that plan running in your mind which is very similar or even when you compare this to cooking or you want to you want to make a dish don't you run it through your mind don't you so this running it through the mind and thinking ahead is what ideation is all about you're looking and then it is not blindly looking forward like say if you want to go for a trip you're not blindly you're not blindly imagining you're, you're you know that this is where you're booked if you're booked by a beach then you then you think that yes i am by the beach i am looking forward for it if you have booked that a, a, a resort which is in the top of a mountain so probably you ideate and think that yes i am you know i am assuming that yes this is where i'll go i'll trek or probably you know the weather will be cold or you know if a beach if it's going to be humid and hot so i think this process of you know going forward in your thoughts and to imagine is a great power that we have you know to to think what can be done based on what you have already with us so the data that you have with us will really help you to understand what are the probable solutions so once we go through that when when we have say x number of solutions uh, in front of us um, then we know we need to probably take a decision so that decision can only by you know by taken by a lot of you know feedback a lot of thought process you know a lot of going back and forth you know putting it to test to you know asking other people so once we have a certain range of things to be you know selected okay so i find say the option number a b and c probably may be the solutions for this problem so you cannot still figure out whether a b or c is still the solution for this so what do you do you probably put it for you put it for test you probably put it for making a prototype you make up you make a you make a sample of the same and you try to figure out as to oh okay fine great um uh, looks like okay we have done these three samples these pro three prototypes okay now let me give it to a user now uh, example is that you want to design a toy for a for a child you have made a sample out of it and probably now what do you do you have to give that toy to the child and play uh, to 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 give and understand whether this is hazard is or probably you know these are you know so you have already done all your research and made it maximum perfect to the point but you still have no clue how the user is going to interact with it so probably that is the point of you know 
uh, testing the prototype. You know, you really want to test your prototype as to see whether the child will play with it, how much engagement are there, are the, is, is the color really working for the child, uh, is it good enough, uh, is it durable? A lot of things will be put under a lot of test and then you come back with saying that, okay, if sample number A showed these problems, sample number B showed these problems, sample number C was like this. So it looks brilliant. Okay, fine. Looks like sample number B is what out of the standing ahead from all of that, which has the least amount of problems. But still, still, we cannot say this as, as a perfect solution because still we don't know what will happen when we will take it forward. So this is a time when we want to scale it up. We want to implement. So after we decided that, yes, looks like sample number B is the best toy that we can make for an age group of kids and we can probably give this out into the market. That is when we need to implement it. We need to scale it up. You know, you need to mass market it. You need to mass produce it. You need to sell it. So during that time, when, when as in how when products come to the market, as in when services come to the market, this is when the final stage of design thinking happens where your customer really experiences. That means the same empathy that you saw for the same customer, the same empathy that you saw in the same customer in the beginning stage and you defined it, now comes a point where the larger group of users will really decide if your product or service is a success or a failure or a mediocre. So this is a time when you know that learn will happen with you and probably the first product that you launched was a failure. You learned from it, you understood that what happened from that. Probably the second product is a better product because of that. So there are, there are a zillion examples of a, a lot of products which have you know, failed and succeeded in, 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 in over a period of time. If you, if you look from you know, automobile brands to mobile phone brands, there are also the other way around, successful brands going failure. So I think this process helps you in understanding you know, the overall process of how do you empathize with someone? How do you look into what they require? And how do I take it step by step into a process where I am able to achieve the product so that why is this process required? So a lot of people may ask, can't I start sketching things out? Can't I start just creating? Can't I start just manufacturing? No, if something goes wrong, how will you identify what went wrong? Which part of that will you blame? Will you blame that you had a bad research or will you blame that you, your, your definition was ill-defined? Or uh, do you say that my you know, selection process was incomplete or my prototype was not given to a proper testing? So you really require a point to go back and tell that, yes, I think I failed here. Or yes, I succeeded here. I need to improve on this. I found a lot of different new kind of solutions at this stage. So I think this is the beauty of this entire process is that that helps you organize things in your mind step by step because you cannot bring out you know certain things out of chaos you require a certain order in things to control yes from the outside it may look chaotic a designer's world or or a, or, a, or a successful person's world may look very chaotic from outside but trust me it is very well organized in their minds they know what they are doing they foresee things they they think five steps ahead than the normal person and then they they understand what do they require so this in just kind of takes you through you know how the design thinking model works from empathy to the final product and all the steps involved in understanding how empathy works on this so moving forward you know um, to to give you a short understanding of you know uh, instead of because every single design thinking process whether it's from idea divine prototype everything has a much more deeper um, you know a probable uh, um, techniques of how you can adapt to it but unfortunately now uh, instead of going deeper into that let's look at what is design thinking capable of as principles let's let's zero it down to you know 10 design thinking principles probably so if you look into this uh, design thinking is very action oriented you know um, it doesn't let you sit on one chair and say that okay fine you know let's let's you know sit here and find solutions no you need to get out you need to get your hands dirty you know you cannot and and also the fact is that at this stage, design thinking behaves like a movie director. You know, it helps you, you know, to get a great movie out. You need to collaborate. You need to bring everybody together. You need, you need a musician. You need an artist. You need, you know, you need a great cinematographer. You need casting. You require everybody and all of them are for different, different areas of interest. And you bring them together. So you are a director there, you know. You are the person who envisions something. And then you behave with that thought process where you have foreseen 
something and then you gel everything in and then you put things into action. So this cross-disciplinary action-centric model is one of the things that design thinking is you know, quite capable of. It doesn't let you sit in one place. It, it, it tells you, go get out on the field, get your, get your hands dirty and get things moving. So that's the first thing that design thinking does. Um, it's, it's very comfortable to change. The second thing is that, you know, design thinking is extremely comfortable. Change. It has to be extremely comfortable to change. Uh, I'll give you an example of a, let's take the brand Nokia. You know, all of you would have known the brand Nokia, not the Nokia as we know it right now, but the Nokia as what you previously uh, would have known. So if you look at Nokia up until a certain year around, I think 2005, seven, Nokia was a king. I mean, everybody would have loved to have a Nokia phone with them. I mean, people used to die and go, you know, crazy for Nokia phones. And, you know, they used to come out with amazing models from for gaming. And But somewhere down the lane in 2007, eight came a brand that said that, okay, fine, this is dead. Uh, we are going into touch. So everybody had doubts regarding the touch screen that this brand came up with. And, you know, 13 years down the lane, and I think that's one of the most successful companies that you know, which is Apple. I mean, they have completely taken over that, um, you know, that, that, that premium segment of phones. And now, right now, you know, so they were comfortable with the change. They took that risk and they said that, okay, fine, let's move ahead and, you know, let's figure out this. So for this says that, you know, you cannot be sitting in one, one box and say that I am not comfortable. So design thinking will help you push out of your comfort zones. It, you need to step out of your comfort zone. You cannot be within your comfort zones and think design thinking, which is not possible. So this is another principle of design thinking that it is very comfortable with um, change, adapting into change. This is very human centric. I mean, design thinking is very, very, very human centric. So this is where we need to understand that, you know, the previous slides, what we show, uh, I mean, which, which you have seen in one of the slides which I showed about the 21st century and the 20th century comparison. So I think, that 20th century and 21st century both are still human centric but i think now it is humanity centric instead of human centric it is now humanity centric because before also it was human centric there was nothing wrong about previous designs the only problem is that it, it only looked into individual uh, needs and requirements you know today also when one of the articles that we have read which which challenges design thinking from a very human centric perspective which challenges that you know, uh, a lot of design thinking needs to move from human centric to humanity centric, you know, without that, you know, we cannot have a future because a lot of these uh, mobile riding, you know, mobile hailing apps that we have from Uber to Lyft to Ola, which has put a lot many number of cars on the, you know, on the street and has, you know, uh, led to more of congestion because um, number of people uh, taking up carpool has uh, is not much, you know, people would have previously gone on public transport is too comfortable now to probably, you know, hail a cab and go. So I think they would have probably solved a human's problem, but as a humanity, if they have solved a problem, it's still a debatable thing which is going on. So these are examples of how human-centric design needs to be. Uh, one of the biggest, you know, success and, you know, inclusivity of design, if you want to look into our country, you can say that how our voting system has moved from a ballot based to uh, a, a digital base or probably, you know, our, our ballot machines, how it is now done or from initially to there now to verify we, we, we have a VV pad. So those, those, those are exclusive design. I mean, it's applicable to everyone. 1.3 billion people in this country will benefit out of a design change, which has happened from a ballot from that crude way of, you know, folding papers and putting in and then counting, unfolding it. So we have gone into a digital era where we have really utilized it's such a wide and large implication of design over there, which is very human and humanity centric over there because it saves a lot of resources. It, it hastens the process, a lot of benefit out of. So design thinking needs to be a very human centric approach. So it, it also integrates, you know, forecast design thinking integrates forecast. So I would rather take up the example of Nokia and Apple over here again. So probably, you know, just ability to see forward in 2005 onwards when Apple, you know, start, I think four onwards when they started off the secret project of the touch device by acquiring uh, a startup at that point of time to develop the touch features for their phone. So they took that risk. They understood that, yes, I think this is the future is. I think that ability to look into future that the way that I described about if you have to go into a trip and see, you start imagining, I think this is what is ideation is about. This is what is 
ability to look into future and predict you know i think this is what is going to be you know needed for the rest of the future so the design thinking also integrates foresight um it's also a very dynamic you know uh, constructive process it doesn't you know it doesn't um it doesn't stick on to one process for the example of this let's understand that you know it is let's let's look at tata motors for example um tata motors is a company up until now uh, for passenger cars it would have been looked by neglected by a lot of indian customers but that has completely changed from the day they have you know taken over land rover and jaguar into their into their portfolio i think that has completely changed their outlook i think not only that tata motors owns them but they are also doing a lot of technology transfer from you know they did a lot of failures their their uh, indica was a success in only in sense cabs they tried with the nano but nano failed you know it was not able to really move everyone into that a lot of people thought that maybe all two wheelers will move into nano but never happened so so i think a lot of this tata motors went through but i think they were able to foresee the previous point that i said they went to a force they they were had a good foresight and then they did the right investment by acquiring them so that means that they are always under a process of construction they don't you know they don't stick to you know their their goals keep changing they don't have one perfect goal which say that okay fine i'll focus on this and finish no they keep evolving they keep changing this whole idea of you know figuring out what needs to be next by you know evolving as in how time progress so it's a very dynamic constructive process design thinking is it it promotes empathy i mean uh, like what i said uh, one of the examples i can cite for over here is i i don't know if you would have come across an app called as misha um it's one of an app which is run in the country where you know it's about reselling so i think a lot of families the entire model of misha works where you know i can i as an individual i can use my connection of my groups and my whatsapp groups and my social media groups to ensure that i can resell something so i mean the number of subscribers on misha the number of you know users on misha the number of people who you know um uh, develop all this and the lives that are affected by all of this are tremendous so i think it also promotes a lot of empathetical perspective to ensure that you know uh, the lives are improved for people who are associated with this um it also reduces risks um and risk taking is a gradual process nobody jumps into taking the biggest risk in the beginning so design thinking helps you you know by going step by step because it 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 helps you to understand because of the process of design thinking from empathy to learn or from definition to learn it helps you analyze every stage go back to that stage where you would have probably gone wrong and keep forecasting towards the future and to see what could be launched so example over here is that swiggy started off as a um, a food delivery um, app but then if you see swiggy right now today it has taken cues from danzo and they have started up uh, swiggy go or they you can deliver anything from anywhere or you know you can buy from grocery store so they are evolving they are constantly evolving so this constant evolution was a result of observation analysis and good amount of foresight that they are trying to do so if you look into a lot of businesses design thinking will help you reduce risk by blindly doing something or plan and do certain things so that's how it can happen so um it also create a lot of meaning um when you when you have association with something it it requires meaning it requires connection to your heart so example for this is instagram i mean it came in as a picture app i mean picture sharing app and initially when it launched i mean it it was it was slow to pick up but i think the reason why facebook picked up instagram shows that it is so connected to you know people whether it is you know and recently apps like what tiktok and you know it it provides certain kind of people certain meaning to it you know and there whether it's whether tiktok is good or not is a debatable thing but you know certain solutions provide meaning to certain people in doing something is what design thinking helps you understand you it everything everything now trickles back to understanding what does a user want and what we can provide so also design thinking creates a good enterprise you know creativity to another level you know um if you look into organizations like you know google facebook or twitter or you know apple or say tesla these are uber cool super companies of the new generation where they have a very different work atmosphere they have a very different process of thought you know they keep on evolving they they don't take 10 years or 15 years to evolve they are evolving 
at every 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 corner at every ten five years or every two years or every three years they keep on evolving because of the kind of people they have the kind of people that they select and the kind of training that they give they have they have the ability to you know sink in with the organization and take this on this this enterprise into a very creative level so i think design thinking also helps to understand how you can focus on you know the entire organizational uh, outputs to sum it up the last uh, design thinking point is that yes this is the new competitive edge in 1980s if the competitive edge was just about profit i think the new competitive edge is about providing value to the customer it is about providing uniqueness to the customer today's market space is entirely cluttered today's market space is you know completely lost the moment that you want to decide that today i have to buy a car of this budget i'm completely confused i mean which one to go for i mean should i go for a b or c i mean all of them have almost similar you know um, features and they have a little bit of difference in price so it's a very cluttered world out th out there so if your business if you are if your strategy has to be having an edge you need to think very very different from the consumer's point of view now having said all this how much ever edge that you still have the the diagram that you're seeing in front of you right now so till up till now if everything was about design thinking i think until and unless we don't train our minds our habits and our processes to adapt to the new form of design thinking which is called as circular design thinking i think this circular design thinking is a ideology based on an economy model called as a circular design the maximum amount of products and services need to undergo a certain transformation where our resources are or our energy spent on these products are gained back through either through recycling or through compost you know or through or through energy uh, uh, absorption so i think we need to understand that the future of our world um, also lies in the next generation so probably all the students who are listening to this for 15 years 20 years down the lane you are you are in some organization leading some big roles so it's very important for you to adapt to thought process and it can it can start from the minor most thing i mean even if in your office you're doing something which is beneficial for the planet and your organization thinks about it you're doing something which is good for it you're looking at a very sustainable way of doing it i think the, it's it's high time that we need to think that design thinking need to exist in all of us in a certain way and to and for this to happen we need to take design thinking as a universal process this is not for designers these are not for artists these are, these are not for creative people these are for everyone this can be applied into at any stage i really believe that the day when we will really have design thinking happening in our schools from a very young age where students are understood the importance of design thinking and how it will help them shape their future and their careers and to apply this universally in whichever vertical that they they go whether you are a banker or whether you are a doctor or whether you are an artist or whether you are whoever you are you will be able to adapt this because end of the day every single human being whatever career they are into they are trying to solve a problem either for others or for yourself so it is very important for us to you know adapt to this and to understand this and to to absorb this so that you know our lives forward whatever decisions that we take keeps planet people and profit in that order so having said that the one of the statements that i would like to make over here is this is that design thinking is expecting the unexpected without expectations because i i know it sounds the most complicated yes design thinking is also as complicated as it but it is also as simple as what it may be um with right amount of practice with right amount of like any other art like any other skill design thinking is a practice of your brain it is a practice of your thought it is a habit that you put in once you put it into practice you definitely will be able to achieve it and once you will be achieving it then you will do it so effortlessly things will start happening so effortlessly with you as effortless as you are breathing today so i think that sums up my understanding and my message to whoever was was attending um about design thinking i think a little bit of q and a will help us to understand if you have some doubts to answer any of your questions thank you thanks a lot for listening to me um so i believe um mr zulfi that was quite an interesting session that you gave us thank you mr um i am sure 
a lot of people uh, would be definitely using on the points that you've told. And apart from that, I am sure the people who have heard this entire presentation would have really, really agreed to a line that you said, and I could also resonate on the same, which was that design thinking is more of a habit. Yeah. It is a way of thinking that can be developed by anybody. Anybody. Yes. And then that rational thinking, that way of interpreting the thought process on the basis of requirement rather than going by the traditional method of following the trend is yeah. what is the need of the art today. Exactly, exactly. I don't so, agree. Um, yeah, I believe uh, students, people who were there on this webinar right now um, would have a lot of questions, I'm sure. So we will be sharing a link on the chat here wherein you can answer, uh, give the questions and we'll be giving you the answers via an email ID that we'll be sharing on the chat screen here. Also, if you feel that your friends and family have someone who could benefit from these sessions, please feel free to ask them to visit our website and register in our other webinars. Um, I'm also leaving a link to Great Place to Study social media handles for all of you to stay updated on the career exploration and colleges. And that being said, I would also want you to be in touch with Mr. Zulfi for any other kind of questions that may oh, come up to your mind. Love to answer that, yeah. And uh, I'm sure uh, the kind of person he is, he would be more than accommodating to answer all your questions. So thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Zulfi, for thank such you, an informative session. Um, all the people who were a part of this session, thank you so much for being uh, involved in this session and listening so intently to whatever Mr. Zulfi had to say. And I'm sure a lot of you uh, would have doubts. So quickly, I'll be sharing a link uh, in the chat session where you can uh, ask all the questions that you had. And I'll also be sharing a small survey link that all of you can look into and give us a feedback on what else we can improve, how we can reach you better, and what all ways we can help you answer and give you a more clarity on all the doubts that you have. So if you just check your link. One moment. So the link is in the chat, I believe. Yeah. I'm just quickly sharing the link with all of you. So um, that gives you the links to these websites and the link for the survey. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you next time. Thanks a lot, Zulfi, sir, for your time. Thanks Thank a lot to much. all participants who came. Thank you. And uh, do keep in touch. Do stay connected. And I wish all of you stay safe during this time of crisis. And collectively, let's all evolve. Let's all incorporate design thinking. And thanks a lot, That's everyone, awesome. for being on this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right.